Hello there. Welcome to this video. In a short time, we will show you how to start using the newest CyberLink PowerDirector 16. Leave us suggestions in the video description to improve our next video guides for this outstanding software. CyberLink PowerDirector 16 is one of the most used professional video editing software on the market. Due to its simple interface and several outstanding features, such as the 360-degree editor, automated editors to create videos and slideshows, and loads of samples, templates, and effects to realize customized videos. We are also running a giveaway for this software. Write a comment in the video description by the end of November and tell us how PowerDirector can help you. The best comment will win a free copy right away. When opening PowerDirector, a startup page opens showing useful features depending on your purpose and practice level. Some of these, such as Slideshow Creator and Auto Mode, open a guided interface where you first add your media and then choose your favorite template, which adds cool effects and transitions to your video. By default, you have several available, but you can download loads of others for free from the Director Zone website. Check it out. After choosing a template, add some background music, and take a look at the preview. If you like it, you can export your video either to your computer, to any disk, or to the main PowerDirector editor to correct and adjust it. If you want to work with no ready templates, you can use either the Timeline or the Storyboard mode. The Timeline mode is the main workspace inside PowerDirector, where you can work on the project timeline directly and control anything in it. You can also add extras, such as particles and titles. Whereas the storyboard mode is a new, simplified version of the timeline mode, where the timeline is substituted by a continuous sequence of media clips, taken entirely. Pictures will have a standard duration of 5 seconds each. You won't be able to use some features, such as text and extras. You can switch between the storyboard and the timeline mode anytime by using the tab button. There is also another feature called 360 degree editor, which opens the timeline mode, ready to manage and realize full spherical media. In respect to default 2D or 3D media, here you have the possibility to check videos and images through any direction by clicking and dragging on the preview. At the top of the startup page, you can set the project aspect ratio between 16 to 9, the old 4 to 3, and 9 to 16, useful for smartphone videos. You can change the aspect ratio anytime from the main interface in the top left corner. To learn how to use all the powerful features inside this software, let's see how to create videos with the timeline mode. This is divided in four main sections as you can see from the four tabs at the very top. The Capture Workspace is used to record any media from either your webcam or your microphone. You can also record your screen by using CyberLink Screen Recorder, included in the software. The Edit Workspace is used to import and edit your media and realize every part of your video. The Produce Workspace is used to render and export your project to save it in your computer or upload it directly online. The Create Disk section is used to export your final video within a DVD menu, complete with titles, chapters, and interactive buttons. We won't see this section in this basic tutorial. Once you have recorded your media from Capture or you have it ready, you can start editing with the Edit Workspace. This is divided in three parts. The Navigation panel in the top left corner collecting all the main features and samples inside PowerDirector, the video preview on the right showing your timeline content, and the project timeline below, used to show and edit your whole project structure. Now let's see how to create your first project with PowerDirector. The first thing to do is import all the files you have to work with, which can be videos, pictures, and sound files. You can directly drag and drop your files from your folders to the timeline or from the Media Room section of the Navigation panel. Here you can find additional media, samples, backgrounds, 
and even your entire projects. The timeline collects all your media on several rows called tracks. There are the video tracks that collect visual media such as video frames, pictures, and titles, showing a blue frame icon on the left. And the audio tracks collect sound files and speech, including the ones from videos. These show a blue speaker icon on the left. Besides these two, you also have other secondary tracks you can use, for example, to contain just titles or speech. All your imported media files are shown as rectangles called clips, with a quick useful preview of these, such as thumbnails for visual clips, and audio waveforms for sound clips. You can check these better by either zooming on the timeline with your mouse wheel while holding control down, or by enlarging the track's height by dragging their edges. To check your project carefully, you have to use the Video Preview. This shows the whole content of your timeline, right where its marker is placed. So you can check a precise instant of time by clicking on the timeline. Or you can click and drag the marker to preview frame after frame with no sound. To play back all with sound, you have to use the player below the preview. Also use the spacebar to play and stop fast. To preview in full screen mode, double click on the preview itself and exit from it by using the escape key. Next to the player, you have other useful options. Use the camera button to take and save a snapshot from your current project frame. Use preview quality to regulate its quality and lower it in case the preview may seem laggy. As long as you have no media selected, the preview works in movie mode, showing your project as it is. But when you select any media from the timeline, the preview works in clip mode, showing your project content and giving also the possibility to edit the basic clip appearance. When you click on a clip, this will be selected and highlighted in blue color. At this point, you can use the clip mode to edit such clip from the preview. You can place it by clicking and dragging, scale it by using its white nodes, skew and distort it with the blue squares, and rotate the clip by clicking and dragging from the blue circle on the center. You can also crop pictures by using the Crop tool on the extreme left. With the Crop Image window, use the white nodes to crop the clip as you like, choosing any standard or custom aspect ratio on the left. Now let's see how to edit your clips to create your own video project. You can move a clip through the timeline by clicking and dragging it. You can also move it from a track to another of the same kind. Videos with sound compose a unique clip by default, but you can make video frames and audio independent by right-clicking on the clip and going to Link, Unlink Video and Audio. If you need to move multiple clips at the same time, you can select all of them first and move. To select multiple clips, click and drag on the timeline to create a section area. This selects all the clips that touch it. In case your clips overlapped in time, PowerDirector shows them depending on the track order. All the clips that stay on lower tracks are always shown in front of all the clips that stay on higher tracks. To stretch or shorten clips in time, approach their edges and click and drag. Pay attention to video and sound clips. If you shorten these, you will cut part of their content anyway. If you stretch them, you can do so until you cover their original duration. If you need to stretch or shorten these clips without editing their content, you have to trim these by dragging their edges by holding Control down. This way, you will have set the clip duration by acting on its playback rate. If you shorten the clip, this will be played faster. If you stretch it, it will be played slower. The trimming is shown as video speed effect with an orange eye icon on the clip. To cut, copy, and paste a clip, right click on it. Remember to use Ctrl and Z to undo your past actions if you make a mistake. 
To split a clip in two, displace the main marker correctly. Right click on the clip and go to Split. Moreover, you can also pull up and down the envelope lines to set the opacity level on visual clips and the volume level on sound clips. Check out our dedicated video to learn how to edit your clips in depth. You also have several track options on the extreme left. You can uncheck and check each track to hide or show its content. A hidden track makes all its visual clips invisible and all its audio clips muted. You can use the lock button to lock a track in order to block any possible modification of all its clips until you unlock it. To add or remove tracks, right click on a track. With PowerDirector, you can also import text and titles to your videos. If you go to the Title Room section, you can browse for several ready title templates you can drag and drop on your timeline directly. At this point, a new green title clip is created, which can be moved, stretched, and edited as seen for visual clips. To edit text content, placement, and appearance, double click on the title clip and use the Title Designer. To learn more about text and titles, check out our video in this guide. Moreover, you can also apply effects and transitions. Effects are used to change the visual clip appearance in order to make it look different and cooler. All effects are collected inside the Effect room. Click on one effect to select it and check it through the Preview. To apply it on a clip, just drag and drop the effect on it. This will be listed with the orange eye icon on the clip. Transitions are effects that are applied just at the beginning or in the end of a visual clip in order to introduce or end in a cool way. All these are collected inside the transition room and shown as visual effects from the clip A to the following clip B. You can drag and drop these on the extreme sides of the clip or also between two consecutive clips in time. Then you can drop another transition to change the effect and drag the edges to edit the transition duration. For more information about effects and transitions, take a look at our dedicated video in this guide. Let's see how to save and export your work. To save your project, go to File and then to Save Project As. This saves as a .pds file. This includes everything inside your timeline, such as placement, effects, and settings applied. Whereas to export your project to playback and upload it, you have to use the Produce workspace. Here on the left, choose Standard 2D or 3D to render a 2D or 3D video on your computer. Device to use templates suitable for smartphones and consoles. And Online to render and upload on social websites directly, such as Facebook and YouTube. Then choose the correct format codecs, and resolution. And on the right, set the destination folder and check the final video preview and the size required. When you are ready, start rendering by using the Start button. Thanks for watching this video. Check out our full guide for more amazing and free guides for this software.